been a big week for biotech. Pfizer gave some disappointing profit and revenue projections for next year. And Merck and Moderna announced positive developments in the treatment of melanoma. Interest rates have also fallen significantly, and that could spark more interest in deals. Joining us right now to weigh in on all of this is Michael Yee. He's senior biotech analyst at Jefferies. And, uh, Michael, let's first talk broadly. How does the interest rate environment and the huge changes we've seen from the Fed this week impact what's likely to happen in 2024 for biotech? Yeah, well, it's great to be here. Good to see you. I mean, you if you look at the, yeah, you look at the last few years, it's been extremely challenging for the biotech sector. Uh, we have been down and out, uh, particularly after the uh, COVID situation. And with uh, skyrocketing interest rates over the last few years, long duration assets, I'm sure your viewers could appreciate that's going to make it very difficult for cash-burning, high-risk uh, sectors like biotech. Mm -hmm. uh, as we look forward to 2024, you obviously have seen somewhat dovish comments. You've seen a, a, a path towards easing rates. And immediately, my sector, which has been out and out for the last few years and pretty cheap, is going to start to rally. We see that continuing in 2024. And we particularly see big pharma and other big uh, companies with a lot of cash going after some of these uh, smaller biotechs. You know, the one one question I have is you've also got all these changes coming to pharmaceuticals, though, with, you know, new rules that are going to be allowing the government to start negotiating uh, for, for drug prices. How how do you put layer that on top of the interest rate environment? Yeah, yeah I think it's a good point. I think that the bigger pharma sort of uh, old school companies and bigger biotechs which will continue to face uh, pressures on drug pricing as we look out uh, towards this end of this decade, uh, I think are actually further under pressure to have to look at their pipelines and continue to build. And I think that's going to come from the innovative smaller biotechs uh, that we see that have particularly struggled uh, and need cash. So I think actually you see a crossroads uh, of tailwinds uh, where you see these companies which have been cheap, and you see the bigger companies having to do more deals, it's just going to be good for the biotech sector. Do you have a list of targets, potential targets, yeah. I should say? Yeah. Yeah. Look, uh, I think if you were to look at the magic list, uh, which everybody uh, wants to think about, whether there's smaller cancer companies like an Immunicor, ticker IMCR, or maybe a Scholar Rock, SRRK, in obesity, there's a lot of small uh, biotechs in the obesity oncology space that I think are particularly going to fit right well with some of these bigger companies which have to build over the next decade. Let's talk about what we heard from Moderna and Merck this week. And I, we had Moderna's CEO on, Stefan Bensel, yesterday. The promise for what they are seeing and planning on doing with cancer is pretty exciting. He said some of it could happen as early as 2025, but it really seems like it's a little further off, 2028, 29, before you start seeing this for other applications. How do you play yeah. that out as an investor? I mean, as, as somebody who, uh, for, for patients, I think it's very exciting. They are not going to be super patient in terms of waiting for these things. But as an investor, you've got a different uh, sort of series of metrics. Yeah, well, I, I think I'd look at it in two ways. One, uh, as it relates to Moderna specifically and the promising personalized cancer vaccine uh, neoantigen therapy that uh, Moderna talked about yesterday, I do think it's exciting. I think there is clearly signs of the potential of the mRNA platform, which I think we can all agree was proven out through all the vaccine uh, success that they've had over the last couple of years. And Merck obviously took a look at that, said super promising, paid a lot of money and is pouring uh, billions of dollars into obviously the lung cancer study as well, which has started up. I think uh, if you take a look at Moderna, I agree. And I think that you've alluded to that. It's going to take a couple of years for that to play out as the study is basically enrolling and in lung cancer. And it's going to take a couple of years. I know Stefan is, is optimistic that the FDA could act on the phase two and allow an early filing. But I think it's going to take some time. I, I think when you look at Moderna and some of the powerful technology, not just with that, but other applications, I think that's promising. Although we're a little bit reluctant because uh, COVID and some of these pressures are still weighing on some stock. How much of all the the craze around these obesity drugs um, is sucking up all the oxygen in the room and maybe all the money in the room, too? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of the haves and have nots. You know, Becky, uh, obviously, with Lilly being a extreme success, and we like Lilly uh, here at Jeffries as well. And I would point out uh, Amgen, which is 
quietly becoming a potential second player with big data next year with a potential monthly or even quarterly obesity drug out of Amgen, which we like, uh, is taking up a lot of the a lot of the air. And I think everyone from every sector now has heard of GLP-1s. Look, I think that's a good thing that there's a huge success and uh, obviously runaway powerful drug uh, for Americans. And that is great to prove the power of biotech and pharma. Uh, at one point, I'm sure talking about drug pricing uh, out of Sanders uh, uh, this week. Uh, but mm -hmm. look, I think it's important because it's drawing money to the sector, proving stocks can work, we can have successful platforms. And I think that's going to uh, uh, obviously drive a huge amount of cash, Becky, uh, towards other uh, uh, companies which are going to be targets, which I think was the beginning of this conversation. And that is good for biotech. So I think it's a good thing. And we need more of that. Yeah, I, I, I hope we can do other things besides just obesity. There's so much promise in, in the medical world.